Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Art Whisper 88. On your screen you will see some white tissue paper that I had uh, painted on uh, some random lines with a brush. And here are some series of circles. Uh, the same here. Uh, I did these uh, beforehand because I wanted to give them time to dry uh, because handling wet tissue is uh, very tricky and I didn't want these to fall apart. So uh, it's kind of a warm-up exercise uh, with, with the brush and some black paint. And um, I'm going to use these later in my collage piece. So I, I just wanted to show these to you first and then um, today I'm going to do another uh, variation of the print uh, that I did before and uh, instead of using a fat magic marker I'm going to use some of this uh, black acrylic paint. This is Blickrylic. It's Mars Black. And uh, I'm going to put a little amount here. And again, my theme is circles and lines. So going to do a vertical line here and then kind of like a like a curve And my dots here. So that will be my, uh, I would call this the uh, skeleton of the artwork. This is the bare bone structure of it. And then I will let this dry. Sometimes I speed up the drying by doing it the old fashioned way with just fanning it. Or I uh, usually walk away and do something else like clean my brayers or, or my brushes. Uh, things that every good artist should do once in a while. So I will be right back. I'm going to wait for this to dry and then I'm going to apply some fine lines with a Sharpie pen. So I'll be right back. Okay, it's been a few minutes and uh, this seems to be dry by now. I'm just going to contrast the thick brush strokes with some thin just some thin lines. I'm hoping that the uh, the lines will get picked up.
Okay, that's it for the thin lines. And uh, the next step is I'm going to charge this plate with um, this parchment color. This is Artist Loft uh, acrylic from a tube. And I'm just going to charge the plate with a thin coat and while waiting for this plate to dry I'm very proud to say I did scrub my brayers very well. Um, it's a good practice because once they get all kinds of crap on them, it interferes with the application of, of, the, of the paint. So it's good practice to clean your brayers as soon as you can and don't wait too long for the paint to start crusting over. Try something with these um, this bubble wrap here. Just very lightly press, very gently, and I do get a very interesting dot pattern. And then I'm going to try this bubble wrap here and see what I can get. Now this is a big bubble wrap. And that's a very cool pattern. They look like little shells or little fossils. Um, then again, I will do some of my favorite marks and maybe a an oval here and an oval here and some more marks there yeah. so uh, Here's a fresh piece of Somerset paper. Okay. And I'll see what the result will be after maybe 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to uh, 
make sure there's a good contact between the paper and the plate because I'm trying to do a ink transfer and also transfer all the textures that I applied the one with the uh, bubble wrap and with all the scribbles okay so I'm gonna leave this for about 15 20 minutes and I'll be right back okay it's been almost half an hour and I think the image has transferred nicely. In fact, I have to pull this very slowly. I like the uh, brushwork. It hasn't uh, degraded in any way. And the bubble wrap textures are very good. This is really stuck there. <clears throat> but I have to pull this very slowly. It's really... But by sticking aggressively to the plate, it picks up every little bit of paint and texture. And uh, here's a close-up. It's interesting what bubble wrap can do. Just a common household object. So anyway, um, I'm very happy with this result. And my next step is to apply some collage on it. Let me see if these pieces will work. So that will be my next segment. Um, so don't go away. Okay, I'm back from a short break. And here is the warm-up piece that I did a little earlier. And I'm going to use this part. So I'm gonna... I had to make sure that this is completely dry before I work on it because if not it would be smearing and i wouldn't want that to happen so i think this would work here some of these circles. And I think having half circles would be more interesting to look at. Thank you. 
Okay, I, I think this is going to work. I just put uh, very small fragments of my, my uh, collage materials. So I'm going to go ahead and mount these and see the final result. So I'll be right back. Okay, back from a short break. I uh, just needed some time to compose my collage elements here. So I'm going to start with this tissue. And it's more or less in the middle of the composition. Like so. Then the next piece of tissue right here. And then this piece on the right side. The reason I favor tissue paper as a collage element is it mounts very nicely. It's very flat once it's mounted and it almost looks like a printed image rather than a collaged image. I have this piece here. You just have to be careful when you handle tissue paper because it's very delicate. Okay, we have this little guy here. Again, this red piece is a fragment of an old stencil that I saved. And lastly is this striped piece on the right side, on the left side.
Okay. I think I will call this piece finished. Let me switch to a uh, close up. So here's the bottom detail. And that's a wide angle shot. So this is a uh, second of a series of the large format. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And thank you for watching. And I hope to see you next time.